What's going on YouTube? This is Sean. I am back again and in this video we are going to be working on spawn. Now I've been teasing this for quite some time now and I figure you know what I might as well just do it already because a lot of people have been asking for it and uh, why not? I figured it might be fun, right? Let's just jump right into it. Now I've already got all my paper templates traced out, cut out, and I am tracing it onto 5mm craft foam. If you're wondering why I'm using pink foam, because uh, it takes a real man to wear pink, and uh, doesn't really matter because I'm gonna paint it black anyways. You know, I usually get my foam from Hobby Lobby, and uh, I think somebody in my area is watching my videos and they're buying out all the craft foam because Hobby Lobby is running low on supplies and uh, I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna take half your foam as you can see I'm already cutting out my foam and right here in the mouthpiece decided to go a straight cut actually I didn't make any angle cuts onto the side pieces as for this jawline thingy right here I did cut that one in inward angle and here are the top of the head which also did not have any angle cuts after I was done cutting out all my pieces I went and cut the inner patterns out and then transferred that over to the main pieces this will help me determine where to apply my glue whenever I start to glue down my accents and this line right here is actually an underburn I'm going to take my wood burner and then I'm going to carefully burn the line and not go all the way through because that would not be good and now that I have all my pieces cut out I went ahead and applied all my glue allowed it to dry for about five ten minutes now I'm assembling everything starting with the top of the dome to the side piece which I'm using the surface of my table making sure that everything is nice and smooth like I usually do and you always want to go and double check and make sure all your seam is nice and closed because sometimes I'll let it slip there'll be a little spot here and there that didn't make full contact and then you know an hour later I find it the contact cement is no longer tacky so you kind of screwed there not really what I usually do in a situation like that is I'll take my heat gun and soften up the glue area and the glue will become tacky again and then you'll be able to stick them together and make things nice and sweet I mean smooth I guess smooth would be sweet right well I don't know so now that I got these two side pieces done it's time to marry these two pieces together and uh, before I do that I gotta make sure I close the nose bridge the eye area whatever and then I'm going to start off by Sticking the mouthpiece, I guess, by the chin area. I'm gonna stick that together first, and then I'm gonna kind of close up the front of the mouth. And then I'm going to carefully join the nose together, working my way up to the nose bridge and the eye gap thingy right there. This part was a bit tricky. I actually tried a different angle, and it was still tricky, but. The best way to do it is to carefully just stick your fingers in Spawn's eye and stick it together. And now that I got everything all stuck together, I went ahead and used the surface of my table to marry the center seam together. And everything is starting to look nice and groovy, right? Except for that little nose bridge, which is still giving me a headache. But uh, so far, so groovy. And now it's time to put on that jawline boomerang thingy. I'm going to line it up in the center and I'm going to work my way out to the ear area. I guess that's what you can call it. I did cut this boomerang chin piece in an inward angle where they attach to each other. And I'm over here trying to glue this piece together realizing that there's no glue on there. So that is a problem but not a big one because i kind of was at glue it's just was quite embarrassing because i normally get that stuff covered the first time around but uh we all make mistakes i guess and in all honesty i make a lot of mistakes because that's how i learn i mean a person who's never made a mistake has never tried anything new so uh how would you know if you can't do it Unless you try. 
And how would you learn if you don't make these mistakes? I'm just saying. And you want to know another mistake I made? Was I cut the one of the edges of the forehead in an inward angle cut, which gave my forehead a bevel look there, which I kind of regret, but on to the next mistake, I guess. Now I'm applying some heat, and remember that uh, underburn that I did around the eye area, I'm going to massage it in just a little bit so it can have some really cool depth there, uh, form of the eye, or something like that, but uh, kind of see where I'm going with this, yeah. I think it's starting to look pretty groovy and I'm starting to get some other ideas for other masks that I can possibly use this template for. Now I'm going to apply some heat to the back rim of the helmet and then I'm going to flare it out just a little bit. This will make it easier to put the helmet on and pull it off without splitting the seam. But I'm still going to go and reinforce it with a thin strip of craft foam right there. But uh, yeah, so far it's looking pretty cool. I decided to put some form around the cheeky area, but it wasn't working out for me. So I just applied some heat and smoothing it back out because I'm going to put some accents to the face that defines what this helmet is going to be which is going to be spawn and it's got this really cool evil looking shape on his face i'm going to apply some heat onto it and try to get a little bit of formation to it before i apply some glue to it and then i'm going to go and apply some contact cement to the helmet along the inner pattern lines that i drew earlier and this will help me make sure that my facial accent is glued on evenly. Because the last thing you want is to have a crooked eye. And the other last thing you want is to have crooked accents. I'm applying some heat to make sure that I can easily form the uh, accent around the helmet without deforming the actual helmet itself. And I'm going to carefully align everything and make sure everything is nice and on there. So far it's looking pretty good. Now when you're in a situation where impatient happens, you can actually use your heat gun to accelerate the drying process of the contact cement. And uh, you know, you can go ahead and speed things up like that. And somehow, even with the reference line and everything drawn on there, and me over here preaching about getting everything nice and straight. I still managed to get the accents crooked. Go figure. But you know what? I'm just going to ignore it. And move along to the next mistake. And hopefully I can fix this later on down the road. Or maybe nobody will notice it. And if somebody does notice it and points it out to me. I'm just going to look at him dead in the face. And be like, it's just cosplay bro. Move along. And now I'm going to take my spiffy Dremel tool and carefully round off the edges of the uh, accents. And uh, this will take out the harshness of uh, the accents, I guess. And you want to be careful with it and uh, not really gouge into the rest of the face. But if you do, you can go ahead and gouge the rest of it and make it look like you meant for it to happen, you know. Now I'm going to use some quick seal so I can seal in the eyes a little bit so that way it doesn't look like you know you got foam sticking on top of other foam and I'm going to uh, put this caulking or whatever on there and I'm just going to go around the eye that way it looks less like foam on top of foam it'll look like uh, foam on top of foam with some caulking on it seems legit right? Now I'm going to add a thin strip of craft foam along the back rim of the helmet. That way the seams don't split when I try to squeeze this helmet on my big old noggin. And then I'm going to take my wood burner with a flat spatula tip. And then I'm going to carefully burn some holes into the uh, mouth area right on the edge of the facial accent. And this will work as some breathing apparatus -y thingy. Because breathing is a thing. 
and everybody seems to be doing it, so I might as well join the trend, you know what I mean? I took some tacky glue, watered it down quite a bit, and then I am painting it on. I'm putting a couple of coats on there, and uh, notice I've been using this tacky glue stuff a lot lately because the end result looks really good, and I'm sold. And now I'm going to airbrush a couple of coat of black paint because, duh, I actually took some gloss black and some matte black and mixed it together. It became satin black. I didn't want it to have a really glossy look, but then again, I didn't want it to be dull either. So why not just compromise and meet in the middle, you know, because I'm a compromising kind of guy. I like to think that. I mean, ask my wife. Now, when you're painting with an airbrush or with a paintbrush, just keep in mind, a couple thin coats dries a lot faster than one really thick coat. So, yeah, just take it easy. Put a few thin coats on there, let it dry, and then throw on another coat, and eventually you'll cover the whole thing. And now that I am done with the black, it's time to add on some white paint. And the reason why I'm using white paint is because I ran out of orange. Some of you guys are probably sitting there scratching your head and be like, Orange? Spawn doesn't have orange facial accent. Sean, you're not making any sense. But then again, I usually don't. And notice I'm just slapping on the white paint, not really care of how it's looking perfect or anything like that. Because I wanted to go for a dirty look. And eventually I'm going to go in there and add some distress to it because... I didn't want it looking nice and pretty. Kind of wanted the uh, helmet to look like it's been through hell and back. Get it? Hell and back because uh, Spawn came from hell. Uh, never mind. So I went in and add some overspray, trying to dirty it up a little bit more. I even took some white paint and finger painted some dirtiness to it. That way the uh, overspray didn't look so perfect either because. That's how we do it here at Sing Prod. We don't do things perfectly. We do things awesomely. Well, here are some glamour shots for your viewing pleasure. And if you're into this kind of stuff, I mean, if you're really into it, then links for the templates will be in the description down below. And swing by my Amazon shop for all your cosplay supply. I got craft foam, EVA foam. I got contact cement. I even have mannequins and mannequin heads and under armor garments and stuff. I mean, if that's what you're really into, links will be in the description down below. I guess that's it for this video. Hit that like button if you feel like you got something out of this video. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button because I'm pretty cool. And uh, make sure you guys follow me on all my social network. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. And... Uh, I guess that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.